Congresswoman Ilhan Omar's Islamophobia bill was recently passed by the House, or, as she would so eloquently put it, something was passed by someone somewhere. The new legislation declares that the U.S. government will now combat Islamophobia, but it doesn't bother to define Islamophobia. Many people are concerned that the new law will be used to punish what used to be protected speech. But there's a bigger problem with Ilhan Omar's bill, namely that Ilhan Omar is an Islamophobe. Just listen to some of her comments from the House floor when she was introducing her bill. There are cynics who would rather see us divided on racial, ethnic, gender, and religious lines because it suits their political agenda. But I believe as Americans, we should stand united against all forms of bigotry. As Americans, we should stand united against all forms of bigotry. That is one of the most Islamophobic statements in history. Why? Because if we unite against all forms of bigotry, we have to unite against Muhammad and the Quran, the twin pillars of bigotry. In Surah 98, verse 6 of the Quran, Allah declares, Verily, those who disbelieve in the religion of Islam, the Quran, and Prophet Muhammad, from among the people of the scripture, Jews and Christians, and al-Mushrikun, Mushrikun are people who associate partners with Allah, will abide in the fire of hell. They are the worst of creatures. So, Jews, Christians, and polytheists are the worst of creatures, according to the Quran. We're lower than pigs. What about Muslims? Well, in Surah 3, verse 110, Allah says to Muslims, You are the best of peoples ever raised up for mankind. So, Muslims are the best of peoples. Non-Muslims are the worst of creatures. Does this mean that people should be treated differently based on their religion? Let's find out. Surah 48, verse 29. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and those who are with him are severe against disbelievers and merciful among themselves. Those who are with Muhammad, i.e. Muslims, are, according to the Quran, severe against disbelievers, i.e non-Muslims, and merciful only among themselves. And we see in the Hadith that Muhammad ordered his followers to mistreat non-Muslims simply for being non-Muslims. For instance, in Bukhari's Al-Arab Al-Mufrid, 1103, we read, Abu Huraira reported that the Prophet, may Allah, blah, 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 said, do not give the people of the book, Jews and Christians, the greeting first, force them to the narrowest part of the road. So, according to Muhammad and the Quran, non-Muslims are the worst of creatures, Muslims are the best of peoples, Muslims are commanded to be severe against non-Muslims, merciful only among themselves, non-Muslims are to be actively abused simply for being non-Muslims. That's obviously religious-based bigotry. What did Congresswoman Ilhan Omar say? But I believe as Americans, we should stand united against all forms of bigotry. Now, if Islam is clearly a form of bigotry, and Ilhan Omar says that Americans need to unite against all forms of bigotry, this can only mean that Ilhan Omar is calling on Americans to unite against Islam. But that would be Islamophobia, which makes Ilhan Omar an Islamophobe. An Islamophobe. Let's listen to some more of her comments. Because it is important, Madam Speaker, that we live in a world where everyone is free of persecution based on their religious background and beliefs. And until everyone is free to practice their religion, no one is. Until everyone is free to practice their religion, no one is. Statements like that are what scholars refer to as gobbledygook. It's like saying, until everyone is a billionaire, no one is. Until everyone can read, no one can. Until everyone marries a Kardashian, no one has. But let's ignore the stupidity of her claim and take it seriously for no reason. 
Once again, we find Congresswoman Ilhan Omar brutally attacking Islam. In Sahih Muslim 4366, Muhammad proclaimed, I will expel the Jews and Christians from the Arabian Peninsula and will not leave any but Muslim. Notice, these Jews and Christians had to be expelled simply because of their religion. Non-Muslims also had to be fought simply for being non-Muslims. Surah 9, verse 123 of the Quran. O you who believe, fight those of the disbelievers who are close to you, and let them find harshness in you. Sahih Muslim, number 31. Muhammad says, I have been commanded to fight against people till they testify to the fact that there is no God but Allah, and believe in me, that I am the messenger from the Lord, and in all that I have brought. And when they do it, their blood and riches are guaranteed protection on my behalf, except where it is justified by law, and their affairs rest with Allah. So, Muhammad was commanded to fight people until they become Muslims. What if someone wants to leave Islam and become a Christian? Well, in Sunan an nasai 4066, Muhammad commands, Whoever changes his religion, kill him. Is everyone free to practice their religion in Islam? No. But what did Congresswoman Ilhan Omar say? And until everyone is free to practice their religion, no one is. So, according to Ilhan Omar, no one will ever have freedom of religion until everyone has freedom of religion, and everyone can't possibly have freedom of religion until everyone rejects Islam. So Ilhan Omar is calling on everyone to reject Islam. But this would once again make her an Islamophobe. This is the great puzzle of our time. Politicians and journalists and educators and entertainers want to shield Islam from criticism. But the only way you could possibly shield Islam from criticism would be to make some rule claiming that it's wrong to criticize someone's religion. But as soon as you make a rule like this, you find out that Islam breaks the rule because Islam criticizes other religions. And Islam does far more than break a rule about criticism because it commands its adherents to violently subjugate people for having the wrong religion. This forces politicians and journalists and educators and entertainers to make rules that are supposed to protect Islam but which actually condemn Islam, thus exposing politicians and journalists and educators and entertainers as hypocrites. hypocrites. Now, if an ideology can only be defended with utter hypocrisy, what does that tell us about the ideology? It is back finally. It is back finally. This is a power of religion. There's a reason to it. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah?